Gamers, I've been the victim of a terrible prank. I put Selen and Jaren on a poll together, and my patrons chose Selen. Jaren is a based greatsword enjoyer. Selen is a spellcaster. I don't want to do that. So please, join the Patreon and vote for the polls that will be easier for me. Oh, and you get exclusive videos and you're supporting the channel. That's nice too. Follow us on Twitch. We're still doing silly Elden Ring runs. We're doing something really stupid right now. That's accurate no matter when you join the Twitch. And make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss the video when that stupid idea comes out. It might even be stupider than using spells. Boom. Roasted. Hey everybody, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. We'll begin at the end of the Dark Souls 3 build, which means we don't have the Physic Flask. Whoops. There are a few important bosses you need to beat before you get Selen's gear, so it's gonna be an NG plus run. Pumpkinhead vs. Greatsword. I'm gonna miss that. Let's mute our future self. Lots of dialogue here to mash through. Oh, you are a prostate witch. That's cool. <laughs> Off to Altus now, and halfway up Mount Gelmnir, we can talk to Azur if Maggie and her gremlins stop poking us. Fine, rest at the grace. Get combat Azur, and Selen gives us a key for the Selia Cave. Seems weird that Selen sends us to Selia, and the connection isn't that she's from there. It's that Lustat is in a cave out back. Okay, Burger King's blocking Lustat. I don't want to fight you, but fine, have it your way. It's another spell Selen doesn't use, but NPC Selen uses somewhere to do something. Actually, pretty sure she's gathering the sorcerer heads to Katamari to mash herself into the cosmos. Now, to the Weeping Peninsula, which we never did in the Dark Souls run, so I'm also grabbing all the flask upgrades. Can't be an Academy student without developing a serious relationship with a flask. Selen told us to come into the dungeon where she's already chained up to the wall. <laughs> I'm playing a video game. I'm playing a video game. It's just, it's a video game. Coming back and the Joker is here. He thinks Selen might have survived us pulling her heart out. Wow, uh, I don't know why he would think that. We decide to fight with her in Raya Lucaria and just waste Jaren in two hits from the greatsword. Now she'll start selling us some unique sorceries we won't use because she doesn't use them in the fight. We'll be using the Glenstone Chris though, just as a backup the spells she uses are bad or something. Anyway, speaking of selling, you know what the best way for you to start selling some merch is? Using today's sponsor, Squarespace. That's right, baby, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's that for a fluid transition? And if you like fluids, you'll love Squarespace's fluid engine, which will make designing your website easier than beating Elden Ring. You don't have to fight a dragon to design your website. You just have to use drop and drag functionality to set up your merch store the way you need to. Check out our website on your work computer, where I made a sneaky little satire site masquerading as a corporate blog, because it's fun. But if you're selling merch, you need Squarespace to handle production, shipping, and inventory for you. It's like a spirit ash carrying your lazy butt to the end. It doesn't matter if the goods you're selling are physical, digital, or even services. Squarespace is going to make it easy for you to connect with your customers. Click the link in the description and go to squarespace.com to get started with a free trial designing your website. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash 2 mango and enter offer code 2 mango at checkout for 10% off your first website or domain. And now that you're done selling your goods, let's get back to selling in Elden Ring. That's the start of our setup, but Selen needs some more schooling. Let's get a master's. Reload the area and Selen, uh, you good? I'm having a ball. Right next to her, we can grab the helmet and then respec. Lots of intelligence, but not 55. We get five extra intelligence from Godric's Great Room and three from the helmet to the soft cap of 60 with 52. Does that all math out? 35 dexterity plus five from Godric's Great Rune will hit 70 virtual dexterity with the Radagon icon later and get a bunch of endurance and mind. For fun. Back at the round table hold, we buy Renala's robes. Does Selen wear the other Raya Lucaria robes? Be honest, could you spot the difference in a police lineup? Next, we need to buy a bunch of stones from the Twin Maidens. Oh, and might as well get the Physic Flask and the Spirit Summoning Bell while we're here. Remember, didn't get any of those in the Dark Souls 3 run. Looks like we're low on somber stones, so let's get on over to EG to buy one through four. The bell bearing four, fives, and sixes is in the mountaintops of the giants. Actually, it was in our pocket. We did grab it earlier. Whoops. Tefera Missoula for the bell bearing to buy eights, and then the other part 
part of Faramazula for the Somber 9 on the floor. Didn't get the Somber 10 either, so uh, Mogwin. Trick the Sanguine Noble to get lost, and there we go, plus 10 knife. Which we're only going to use if the spells are, like, completely unusable. Now let's invest in casting. Grab the Radigan icon from above the Red Wolf Arena and follow chat's terrible directions. Get a little lost. Check a couple Burger King Wizards prostates with some backstabs. Then just look up a guide on where to find the Conspectus Scroll. More Raya Lucaria running around, selling his mad she got kicked out, but like, I don't know, this school sucks. The layout is a nightmare. Imagine being late for class and having to drop down rafters to get Shattering Crystal. Yeesh. Bring that scroll back to Selen, then she'll be selling us Glintstone Comets hard. It's a laser. Cool. I love Night Comet. More crystal spells from the Crystallians. We don't really have stance pressure, but oh well. The dagger can kind of get it done, and after taking a little longer, that crystal release is just gonna feel better. Carrion Study Hall next, but right side up for the Carrion Glintstone staff, and now, I would like to roast Selin, please. Her helmet gives you three extra arcane, but she doesn't use the Alberneric staff which would split with Arcane. She doesn't use the bubble spells that require Arcane. It's just for nothing. Don't worry though, because of the boost to intelligence in Arcane, your stamina bar is throttled by 50. 15%. Yeah, remember how I said we invested in endurance? That doesn't matter because apparently this helmet drains our very energy to live. Spellcasters still use endurance too. Like casting spells cost stamina in addition to magic. I don't know why, that seems kind of like baloney since you're already spending a limited resource to cast your spells, but whatever. At least we're using a great staff. The Carrion Glintstone Staff. It boosts Carrion Sword Sorceries. Does Selen use any carrion sword sorceries? No. She uses two crystal sorceries, a glintstone sorcery, which is not boosted by the carrion glintstone staff, and a primeval sorcery. The worst primeval sorcery, by the way. Does she throw on either of the hats that boost those spells? Nah. Does she have a crystal staff in the offhand? Sure doesn't. The only arguably good thing about the crystal spells is that you can get two staffs to boost their effectiveness in a single NG playthrough. One of them is in goddamn Elifel, but you can. It's also a 10% boost each, and Staff of Loss is 30% in one hand, and you can use Lustat Staff for actually better casting scaling, but all that's fine, because I don't even think spell enjoyers are gonna come in here and defend the crystal spells. They are fully without merit. I thought, oh, maybe they deal some physical damage too. Wrong! Raw Magic. They are just worse versions of the other Raw Magic spells. Crystal Torrent is a worse Azura. Crystal Release is Magic Downpour with a higher intelligence requirement. These aren't the ones that any of you think are good, right? I don't even think Magic Enjoyers are about to say sell it and picked good spells. Back to the run. Let's fight Garonk. He literally stands still so we can maximize the power of Crystal Release. It takes two full Crystal Balls, hitting him with every single spray to break the stance. And it's slow as hell to come out. The shotgun spray, try that. Yeah, it sucks. Okay, Glintstone Comet's hard. It comets hard. It's gotta be good. It's not. It does about half as much damage as the Glintstone Chris weapon art, but I charged the spell and I did not charge the weapon art. We wasted all of our magic casting spells since they're more expensive than the weapon art by a considerable margin and lost to Garonk. I don't know how much more fair I can be to spells other than using them directly next to an Ash of War that does the same thing faster for less magic and harder. It's not an arguably better thing that I have a spell hater bias. Literally everything about the Glintstone Chris weapon art is better than all of the spells Selen uses in every single way. But in the interest of being thorough, let's go gas up everything and try again. First, we'll gas up the knife, because it's actually a gun. The best knives in Elden Ring, they're all guns. Reduvia, Arcane Gun, Black Knife, Faith Gun, Chris, Intelligence Gun. Let's talk to Alex, then talk to him in the hot tub. Then, go get something that will help the spells and weapon art to do more damage. Time to fight Godefroy. Just as we thought. Crystal release to hit him as he spawns in, because, well... Otherwise, it's too slow. And then the Chris just does more damage, and we can follow it up with an R2 stab that does even more, even more damage. And the range is better, and look at that. Even has some stance damage, followed by a crit with 10% extra crit damage, or should I say, Chris damage. That'll give us the Godfrey icon to boost charged spell and weapon arts by 15%. Works for Comets Hard, and it works for Chris. Back to Faramazula for an early swag jump, then up to Alex. I keep getting slightly impressed by the crystal release, 
release until I follow it with the Chris shot, Chris is simply built different. Now we get the jar shard for 15% more damage on the weapon art that does not work for spells. Back over to Lernia because I forgot to get the magic tier. Fully charged comet shard does 612 damage, 950 from the Chris. We have not equipped the jar shard yet. They are being boosted equally. And now Garonk, except I won't mess around trying to make the spells work. We're just going to use the gun. With that, we have a final upgrade for the carrion staff. Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. The spell hater wasn't using a fully upgraded staff when he said spells were bad. Time for a big improvement. Is that it? But scaling is kind of a nebulous number. We need to do more science. This is all about going to school. For our final spell, we have to make like Alphaba and try defying gravity on an invisible bridge in the mountaintops of the giants. It's the third primeval spell, Founding Reign of Stars. Fitting that it's in the here a tickle rise because this spell here, it only tickles. Thanks, I'll be here all week. And next week, you can watch these videos whenever. Maybe put them on while you sleep. A lot of people like to do that. To keep giving spells a fair chance, let's hit up Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave for some cracked crystals. If you want to enjoy sorceries, it helps to have some cracked crystals. Way up north in the consecrated snowfield, we play a little Skyrim that we absolutely didn't need to. Albert Eric Rise has a fun puzzle where you have to trick some imps into murdering their own brothers, just once again proving that sorcery enjoyers are literal war criminals. It's clear this is just a running big Bit, right like it's just kayfabe play the game however you want if you're having fun spells might not be my thing but it's okay if you like them i don't think you're a bad person I'm trying to go super hard so everyone understands like it's a goof we're playing around here anyway that's the final piece of the puzzle the graven brass talisman for eight percent more sorcery damage wait a second did someone say brass That's Sellout by Real Big Fish. Ska is the people's music, and I'm gonna try and ska it up in the needle drops whenever possible. Grafted Scion will continue to be an experiment. We shoot it four times and it dies. Elden Ring history would have gone a lot differently if the scholars of Raya Lucaria listened to Selen and just used a gun against Radagon's invading army. Talk to Melina, a fellow gun enjoyer. She just uses the Blade of Calling, which is, you know, like a squirt gun. Hey, you know what else we forgot to get on the Dark Souls run? Pickles. Nerd Juice is our first test of the Chris against an NPC, and this is kind of where it gets a little weaker. He dodges and shoots his gun. I'm humiliated when Yura shows up and lands an attack before we're done fighting. Shame on me. Let's try patches. I get the release down where he'll land and then he just doesn't jump what try again it's just so mana inefficient we take down patches by living up to our title as a prostate witch no blockage dude you're good to go come back in three to five years now we warp back to the dragon barrel right away just so that we can warp to the round table hold and get some pickles with that recipe remember how i said founding reign of stars was bad well it also takes up two spell slots Get Gostock to open up the gate then check his danger path and after that we go to stormvale castle i thank you Godric, we take the time to pull out the best talismans for casting. Radigan's Icon for max casting speed, Ritual Sword for 10% damage boost, Graven Ass Talisman for an 8% boost, and the Godfrey Talisman for a 15% boost. That is the best we can do other than getting Magic Scorpion, which is a big long quest and would boost the Glintstone Crisp just as much as it would boost the spells. I am being as fair to the spells as I possibly can be. It's 869 damage from Comet Shard for 28 FP. Then I swap the talisman over to the Chris. Chris gets 1266. For 10 FP, it's 50% more damage for less than half the cost, almost only a third of the cost. Okay, you're done. I just, you're done. Jeez, that isn't even counting the follow-up R2 you can do. That's the last test. We're not doing it for every boss. It can't get much cleaner and more easily observable than that. We do give him a release to start phase two, and then I run around and check Godric's prostates. Yes, plural. You think he's just grafting hands? Let's graft plus five to every stat onto ourselves. We can use a lot of them. Vigor, mind, and intelligence, obviously. But dex also helps the dagger damage quite a bit. And our stamina sucks because of this helmet, so we need that endurance. 50% is a nasty penalty, trust me. 
off to Fort Farrell, fail the navigation, I get to do it twice. Then we can imagine Selen in Fortnite. Then keep testing the spells on Fortnite because I love science. And a huge part of the scientific process that is often left undone is repeating the experiment. Everyone gets funding to publish, but verifying results is so important and so underfunded. Let's go to school now. It's Raya Lucaria. Lots of people go back to school later in life. It would be better if it was tuition free. Up to Altus, just to activate the party at Radon's house. Now, our Chris does best when we can hang out in the back and just kind of shoot in. So after getting everyone together, he doesn't get a phase two. We just unload and delete that health bar. Time for some bad routing. It's gonna take a minute to get really bad, but we'll get there. First, Draconic Tree Sentinel. He's pretty slow, but will spam ranged attacks. Ours are faster. The royal capital ain't big enough for the two of us. Kapow! He's kind of a cowboy. Different routing here than usual. We get the seedbed curse because it's gonna be dung eater time. Think about it. Selen summons a tarnished to help her fight Jaren, which means that we can summon a spirit ash that is a tarnished. And if we coincidentally choose the beefiest one that also has a debuff that would make us do more damage, that's fine. It's also why we didn't hit the Valiant Gargoyle, since we're gonna have to go to the sewer for Dungi anyway. Shoot the tree avatar a couple of times, get the Lord's Rune, forgetting we're on NG+, and even 50,000 runes ain't worth very much at this point. Time to go to the sewers. Ugh, smells like shit in here. Wait, sorry, YouTube doesn't like it when I swear. Uh, it smells like Glintstone Comet Shard in here. More like Comet Shard. Dungi Peter gives us the keys to his release, but he's being guarded by a hand. Thankfully, we have the key to dealing with the guard. This is a gun. Zoom through the rest of the sewer, I'm kind of on autopilot. We do shoot Shrek a little. Shrek 2 ends differently if Fairy Godmother is packing. All the way down to Sewer Moog and get a sneak peek of our future with a very stinky partner. Gamers, our future's looking bright. Dung Eater soaks up so much damage while we just hang out and do the DPS. In the round table hold, we read the Dung Eater's message and wait. Wait, if Feep dies, does that mess up the Bogart location and stop us from getting the necklace? Easy solution, kill Bogart first. Then we don't have to worry about that. A lot of people seem mad that I keep killing Bogart, but like, you know he calls Raya a bitch, right? Like, he's a bad guy. That's a nice snake girl with scoliosis. She doesn't deserve that. Now, Selen is a smart lady and fighting the Dung Eater is stupid. Let's work smarter, not harder, and have the crab do things for us. This crab has squaw attacks that can hit the Dung Eater, but more importantly, the mist it sprays out has death blight, which just insta-kills the Dung Eater. Off to carry a manor, we need Selvis to bless this union, but come on, prostate witch and Dung Eater? That's a match made in heaven. This is the kind of couple that notices you at the bar and makes you think, I wish this place had better lighting. Time for the prostate witch to enter Radon's hole and this is cavernous. Mimic tier fight, I'm just using the knife as a knife here. NPCs are weirdly good at dodging bullets. Walking forward and pressing R1 works better. Why go to the royal capital? Well, I have this pretty cool thing where I get distracted easily and forget what I'm doing. I guess we'll shoot Godfrey. It takes about 20 seconds all told, just backing up, shooting a laser. It's pretty good until the enemies start dodging, but it's even better when it costs less magic, does more damage, and has options for a follow-up. Is Morgoth any harder? Nope, not really. We can even get grabbed with NG plus damage, but God bless 40 Vigor. Now I remember to go to carry a manor because I won't forget what we're doing and goof up. Loretta has better magic resistance, but not very much health, so... We don't care. Wow, Celavis made a doll that looks like us. What is that thing? I don't like it. Why do you have it? Maybe Ronnie knows why one of her subordinates has a closet full of real dolls right by the office. Is this not a place of business? Let's confront him directly. He gives us a potion. We mash through some dialogue, mash through Gideon's dialogue, give him a potion. Oh, hold up. Why did I give Gideon the potion? The potion for the Dung Eater. The potion specifically chosen to puppet Dung Eater. The Dung Eater's potion. That potion? Who wants to watch me realize what I did in real time? You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now. Oh my God. Okay, well, maybe we'll just summon the best tarnished ever. Let me solo her. He's just gonna throw pots this time and be called the Jarrite Puppet. Well, it's time to light the lights in Nakron. Don't focus on the negative focus on the positive, and I'm positive that we still have a gun. Guns are great at hunting deer, especially when we get headshots. Damn, that was like really, really fast. For a second, I thought we could maybe do the mimic tier, dress it up like Jaren for a little extra humiliation, but then I realized I'd have to hot swap at the start of every fight. I don't wanna do that. Let's just bring the knife to Ronnie and head to the incel river main. That's all we got to for stream one though, probably because there was like an hour and a half of setup for spells we won't use. Oh well, at least we still have the strap. I got the strap. Hey. I gotta carry him. 
Just a basic Nox Stella run through here. Say hi to Phalanx Demon's Holes. We can't check their Demon's Holes, unfortunately. The big ball hits us while driving at like two miles an hour. Okay. I decided we'll just level up the Jar Ride Puppet. It's our punishment for messing up the Dung Eater quest, but hey, Jar Ride Puppet, not bad. Doesn't cost too much FP, does random status effects. I don't hate it. I hate the Lake of Rot. It's just Hold Circle Simulator 2022. Doesn't matter that it's 2024. When the game came out, it was 2022, and we're still two weeks away from the DLC. That will eventually be true. Maybe not the day this video goes live. Astel time. Jar Wright takes a grab for us that should have hit me. He really is proving his worth early. Shooting the bug in the head really starts to feel like doom. Oh, and our partner's throwing grenades. Love the one you're with, I guess. Oh, hey, we didn't actually do Raya Lucario yet. Let's remedy that, like, really fast. Dog first. 40 magic resistance, so it's not hard to reenact old Yeller and take him out back. NPCs are the worst to fight with the gun, so when we hit Moongrum, just... Now, Ranala has 80% magic resistance, kind of why I delayed this. Still only a two cycle, but almost wasn't. Get the Jar Buddy out for phase two and he throws poop. Are we sure we don't have the Dung Eater? More like smellin'. And use the knife as like a knife instead of a gun. It feels wrong, let's never do that again. Selen, more like fell in. I mean, I'm pretty sure Katamari Damashiing two sorcerers into yourself is a crime. We make it on the second time and get into the deep root depths to die again from falling. But that fall wasn't steep enough to kill us. The game is wrong. I'm not counting that as a death. Okay, fine, we'll count it as a death because that's only the third death we've died so far. I didn't even go get the answer this time. We have plenty of rune arcs because staying back and blasting is pretty efficient. When your blasting does more damage than a spell, comes out faster, costs less FB, and has a follow-up attack. Via champs, I got a great tip from chat to not use the Chris shot on the NPCs because it'll be bad. Yes, I nope. am. Wrong. Look, NPCs dodge everything until they get right in your face. Then they want to attack, and since Chris can come out faster than their attack, that ends up being the best solution. Bad news though, Jar Right Puppet gets death bitten, and we basically have to fight the triple gank by ourselves. Maybe we need to use spells here. I'll try the crystal release. Now, if you want to bait them into the full release, you have to be a master of baiting, not a prostate witch. Shotgun crystal, that should hit someone. Literally misses all of them. Never should have doubted the Chris. All I gotta do is kite them to be alone, maybe trade a little bit, God bless 40 vigor, and God bless an Ash of War that basically one shots the axe poise boys. Lionel almost finishes us off with his best move. No, none of his spells, obviously. The repeating thrust Ash of War that he has, and then we finish him off with the Chris Ash of War. Sorry, Pine, this is the new best Chris. Also, we all agree, Pine is the best Chris, right? Pine, Evans, Hemsworth, Pratt, but the number one is Glintstone. Hey Raya, can we go to your mom's house? Promise we won't kill your dad, unless maybe you think that's a good idea? First, we gotta pop the balloon man, using a knife and using the jar guy, though he's just a distraction. That gets frostbite, so our bonus crit damage does even more damage. Then, pop, pop. he's dead. Rykard with the serpent hunter. Skip it. Actually, wait, worth mentioning. Brought the jar right out in phase two. He's good for this fight. Status effects are good and he will proc them. Now, Skip it. For Biden lands and make sure you know where the people you're voting for stand on important issues to your community. A lot of people don't even realize there's a huge schism between federal and state dairy boards based on who deserves the subsidies from the government. There's only one presidential candidate that's in favor of the state dairy board. Google Trump Biden pro state milking on your work computer to find out which is which. Fire Giant with Magic is all right. One shot breaks his anklet and then what the heck? Let's bring in the puppet. Little thing I haven't even mentioned. The Glintstone Chris is so cheap cheap for FP, that even with a Spirit Ash, we kill the giant before drinking at Blue Flask. We do it hitless even. Fair Missoula, yada, yada, yada. It's the Godskins. I shoot them with a gun. Wright poisons them and Bernie tanks. It's a three person party. Everybody's filling their role perfectly. Celebrate with a swag jump, then skip the bird run. I guess I could shoot the birds, but I could also just press the circle button and hold the analog stick forward. That's faster. Malakath, hey, is that phase one? Weird, it's over. Phase two takes a little longer, but that's just because phase one took 10 seconds? Technically, it's still longer, even if it's only 15 seconds? I'm trying to stretch out the voiceover so we can show a little more of the fight, but yeah, we kind of just shoot stuff. Gideon, I'm a little more worried about. Lead with a boosted crit and then realize I shouldn't worry about anything. He has plenty of terrible spells that make him stand still to get shot. Imagine using spells. What an idiot! Godfrey does counter us a little bit charging into our gunshot, but wait, charging in isn't a counter. That's getting shot. I wonder if we got enough stance pressure. 
Yes. Yeah, that's the first Elden Lord. Radigan time. We got the strap. Buddy could parry him. So let's use the Chris as a knife, and hey, wouldn't you know it, that's kind of fine too. Not great, but fine. Now for the Elden Beast, it's the return of the Pop. Pop, I missed you for the two minutes it took to beat Radagon. Get the stance break? With a dagger? What? Okay. Avoid the ring, run around all the way to the back to avoid Elden Stars, and the puppet takes the reins. Not control of the fight, it dies to Elden Ring. Triple rings, I don't care. We're just shooting and chasing it down. Chasing it down is easier because we don't have to get as close with our ranged attack. Attack. Boom, God has been defeated by gun. Sadly, Chris doesn't make it faster for us to run through the world and clean up the other remembrances. I could have done slightly better routing by saving the carrying staff from the study hall in the NG plus cycle to work back here when we need the curse mark of death. But to be fair, if I was trying to save time, I could just, you know, ignore the staff altogether in the 40 minutes we spent collecting the other spells. Remember, I'm dunking on the spells Selen is using specifically, but I did actually make a tier list. So here's the end of cast and pass, at least for the sorcery section. Slicer and Night Comet are really good. Ronnie's Dank Moon and the Bubbles are good. The Basic Moon and other sword spells, Hyma spells, and Shard Spiral are fine. Everything else is trash, including Azur. Yes, it's useful against like three bosses. Every other time you try to use it, you're just gonna get smacked. Every other laser spell is useless when Night Comet is so easy to get out in the overworld. The only reason to use them is if you like light blue better than dark blue and you're drastically cutting your efficiency to do that. Every ice spell is outclassed by the Chilling Mist or Ice Spear Ash Vore. Adula's Moonblade does go into fine territory because I think it looks neat. All the spell counters are are less effective than just pressing the circle button since your stamina comes back and your FP doesn't. Magma and death sorceries both require so much investment for kind of nothing. Crystal spells are just uglier and do less damage. The stone digger spells are wild strikes, but worse. Gravity spells are all too slow. Meteor of Astel is the same thing as Azur, but looks cooler, I guess. So when I say sorceries are trash, what I mean to say is 16 sorceries are good, the rest are trash. And 11 of those 16 are like, fine. I'm being generous with those. We'll do incantations in another video. Subscribe for more. Fortis Axe can get shot in the face. Buy the Ash of War, super free. Founding Reign of Stars is worthless. Didn't even mention it in that tier list, so let's show it off against Placidious Axe. It's a big blast of ring. Should hit huge bosses with big hitboxes a lot. Basically, it should be the sorcery equivalent of Pest Threads. It might even hit Placidious Axe's heads to get extra damage. No, it does the same damage as one shot from Chris. Before we re-optimize the talismans for the Chris. For our hubris to try and test the primeval sorcery of ancient power long thought lost, we have less magic and then the Jar Jar died. I had to use a flask. Disgusting. Put Placidious X in the corner, use the Chris, and yeah, we win. A prostate witch in the castle's hole? More likely than you'd think. Niall hits us with a three on two. Wait, uh, two on two. Wait, eh, one on two. But who's on first? Niall died when we shot him. Finally found a way to use the spells. The old man gets the shotgun. One shot. It's so good it can kill an old man. Then the perfumer. All right, learning a basic enemy. Feel the power of my two slot spell. All right, basic Lernia enemy. Feel the power of my two-slot spell. All right, basic Lernia enemy. Feel the power of my two-slot spell. All right, basic Lernia enemy. Feel the power of my two- Oh, no, you healed. Feel the power of my two-slot spell. Oh, no, basic Lernia enemy. Get ready to feel the power of my two-slot spell. Wow, it only took a full magic bar to kill that basic Lernia enemy. I don't know, maybe I was wrong about this one. I'm a bit tired of singing the Chris's praises, so I'm gonna give it some fun new nicknames. Glizzy McGuire takes out the Penguin Noble after missing a few times. He's using the Arcane Gun, so that was basically high noon. A second Sanguine Noble gets hit by the Leonardo Distraprio, and it's time for Mo. He gets the full treatment of the Chris Glock. Oh, shit. It's still a Chris joke, but what can I say? This Ash of War slaps. Give me your, give me your, give me your attention, baby. We only have the Howling Tree left, which means first we gotta go through the Liturgical Town. Nothing happens in the Liturgical Town. I guess I could try to snipe the snipers before they snipe me, but I don't care enough to. It's been a minute since they shot us down. Hey, maybe Founding Reign of Stars is good for hitting the Invisible Assassins. No. 
It's good for nothing. I'm really trying to find places where these are good. They're just not good. I would love to branch out and try to enjoy more spells, but branching out is Halig Tree. We're, um, I don't know. I was trying to segue. We're in the Halig Tree. We make the swag jump. Let's take on Loretta. Are we rebooting the DCEU? Because this James Gunn sure does be casting Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. He was just a really bad fit for the role. Just like my role was bad and I died. I'm calling it now. Last death of the run. Surely Melania will be easier than her equestrian roommate. Loretta sure is jumping today. We're able to get enough shots off to blast her and the horse she rode in on. The robe looks really funny going down a ladder. Highly recommend doing that. Clean rot spear drop. Running through the waterfall is nice and NG+, but who cares? Let's fight Melania. She has the power of an outer god running through her veins, but we have Reese's pieces. Your pieces? My gun. Oh. Hi. Anyway, I started blasting. Bah! Wow. I summon the Phoenix Wright puppet and start getting stabbed. That's not great. The dash follow-up to the gun is missing a lot, but Phoenix ain't. Did you know you can frost pot Melania out of the ducky dance? Yes, everyone did. First week the game was out. That was like the number one tip. Did you know you can empty the clip on Melania as she's in the onion? She just goes for a second onion, like right away. Then does the uppercut, and it's just one more shot to win. Before we get into the stats, I just want to compliment the Jar Wright puppet. I thought it was kind of trash before, but honestly, it holds its own. It might not have the best health, but there's something about a naked guy wearing a pot on his head that Melania just can't handle. At seven hours and 10 minutes, we killed 32 bosses and only died four times. Despite the huge amount of setup time, we actually did great here, just under the Knight's Cavalry at the bottom of S tier. Why? They like didn't die. Four times, half of them were silly gravity deaths. One of them was to Garonk because I was trying to make the spells work. Crystals are just so powerful. Not the crystal spells that Selen uses. No, those are garbage. I mean a portmanteau of Chris and Pistol, you know, a crystal. This is debatably the best gun in the game. It doesn't have the weaknesses against spirity bosses like Reduvia, and it doesn't have the wind-up time of Black Knife. It might not have as much damage potential as Bleed Prox or Destined Death, but like, dang, are we sure? This thing packs the heat. Sorry for the strays you caught today, spell enjoyers. There really are some great spells in the game. Selen just doesn't use any of them. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We're finding fun ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel, vote for future builds, or watch exclusive episodes, follow us on Twitch. That's where you can see all the funny game stuff live.